After 200 grueling miles in Elkhart Lake, Wisconsin, Jacques Villeneuve returned his dented number 22 Dodge Challenger to the pits. The race was over, but he was still a hunted man. Clamoring for his attention was a rather generously proportioned individual of the non-jolly variety with a distinct Carolina drawl. It wasn't long before a series of G-dropping expletives began to fly in Villeneuve's direction. Reporters instantly rushed the scene, and that's when Villeneuve made the biggest mistake of his sputtering NASCAR career. It had nothing to do with me, so I really don't care, he announced. The incident in dispute occurred on the last lap of the 2012 Nationwide Series race at Road America. Villeneuve, in sixth, was chasing down Max Pappas, an Italian road course ace, and Danica Patrick, the unequivocal first lady of NASCAR. As Villeneuve pulled alongside Pappas, the Italian moved sharply left, forcing Jack onto the grass. Just a wee bit yonder down the track, Danica was slowing for the upcoming turn. Villeneuve jumped on the brakes, but too late. As he skidded towards the corner, he nudged Patrick's rear bumper and sent the GoDaddy girl spinning into the gravel, her race ruined. Patrick's portly crew chief, the incomparable Tony Yuri Jr., was more than a little irked. After all, his queen of speed was finally running in a position higher than 35th, but he wasn't about to receive an apology. The NASCAR community instantly tore Villeneuve a new exhaust pipe. Even his own sponsor, Discount Tire, took the unprecedented step of apologizing for their association, stating Villeneuve's comments were not reflective of Discount Tire's sense of true sportsmanship. But what about a sense of context? Rewind the tape of Villeneuve's post-race interview and you'll find he was only asked about Tony Yuri Jr.'s comments. He simply remarked that he couldn't break in time to avoid Danica and as a result, didn't care what Tony Jr. was saying. Naturally, that's not how it was reported. Away from the TV cameras, Jacques said, I absolutely regret the contact with Danica and certainly did not hit her intentionally. This statement received about as much media attention as a vegetable on Tony Stewart's dinner plate. He should have said this on TV immediately after the race, as per the three golden NASCAR interview rules. Ignore the question, thank the sponsor, praise the Lord. But that's not JV. It never has been, it never will be. And really, what more could race fans ask for? While Villeneuve calls it as he sees it, his competitors spew out predictable blather. Take Max Pappas. When he was questioned about the Villeneuve-Patrick crash, he responded by advising all fans to switch to Nationwide Auto Insurance. Unfortunately, Nationwide doesn't sell image insurance. Short of giving the stink eye to an Earnhardt, there's nothing worse you can do in NASCAR than take out the pretty chick. Add to that two reckless errors Jack committed in 2011, and you have to wonder if Discount Tire would even let him buy cut-rate retreads for his station wagon, let alone drive their prize number 22 again. Well, that's too bad for them. Despite racing just a couple of times a year, Villeneuve is instantly faster than the usual nationwide field whenever he climbs through the proverbial window. He's led in seven of eight races. He's never qualified outside the third row. And he's made three wide passing moves seem routine once advancing from eighth to first in just three corners. On multiple occasions, he's had large leads erased by an overwhelming variety of full course cautions, usually because some sleuth has noticed debris on course. But these impressive drives are forgotten. Now, anytime his car remotely contacts another, he's assumed at fault. Michael McDowell was another such victim, apparently. When he slammed into Villeneuve at Road America, McDowell blamed JV for going too fast and then too slow at the same corner? In reality, Villeneuve slowed to avoid the amateur weaving in the 31 car. McDowell was the one going too fast. But in the eyes of the NASCAR media, the judgment of a star Mazda champion from the southern states is valued just a bit more than that of an F1 champ with a French-Canadian accent. When questioned about his frequent contact with other drivers, the great Ayrton Senna famously responded, if you no longer go for a gap, you're no longer a racing driver. You can accuse Jacques Villeneuve of being aggressive, arrogant, and maybe a little reckless at times, but he's very likely the purest racing driver to ever sit in a nationwide series car. And if there's a gap, you can bet your last Canadian quarter that he will always go for it. Hey, you very good! See you next time!